you know, was relaxed and I had fun swirling the little things, but still thinking, you know, you go back and forth between, oh, I got nothing to do after this soccer wise, but then, oh, I hope we get a good draw for the U.S. So, you know, you're always, it's always in my mind about how my team's doing. What are your thoughts when you see a new World Cup cycle kickoff like this going towards the CONCACAF championship, obviously down the line of World Cup? What are, what are a player's thoughts at this moment in the, the preparation? Wow. Um, they probably know the exact day to the, 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 the kickoff for the first game for the qualifiers, and then they know the exact day after that how many days they have to prepare for the World Cup. So, and then you got you know a list of things you want to be better at personally and as a team, and um, you're happy or nervous about who who you drew to play in the in the qualifiers. Um, you're looking at the stadiums, and so it's just it's kind of a, a rush of incoming thoughts. Um, and I, I remember when we had our first qualifier, it was in Haiti, and uh, knowing nothing about the process. Um, but it was nerve wracking to go down there and, and, and then be preparing and knowing this is it. You do or die, man, you have to perform. So, which is fun, but it's also, you know, you're on edge. Obviously, in your day, the U.S. dominated CONCACAF in the region, but things have changed a little bit, even with the U.S. not winning the championship last time around, finishing in third place. What are your thoughts on the development of football outside of the United States women's football in the region? Yeah, I mean, there weren't as many teams as when I was playing, you know, back in the day. Um, so it's exciting to see uh, the development and um, the other federations supporting the, the women's game on that side. Um, and also just to see the, the media and the, the programming and the awareness, the opportunity so many of these teams have now. Um, and I'm, I was excited to see we're playing in the States. Um, so then the rest of the country in the U.S. can come and watch these games. And then the fans from the alternate countries around Con CONCACAF can come and see you know, the U.S. But more importantly, when, there's girls and women's soccer all over this country. So maybe they get to see a little bit more of that, too. Finally, uh, Sonia bien I mean, executive committee member for CONCACAF, spoke of the development of the, the game for girls in the region. What are your thoughts? I mean, how does the game continue to develop across the region for, for girls and young ladies? Yeah, I was thinking about that as we were um, sitting there listening to her, her talk to us. Um, well, I, I was like, you know, we need to get um, more of the, the players that are retired back into that process to just to, even a conversation with a team would help um, tremendously because they have no perspective probably. Um, and so just, just talking to them and maybe, you know, touching base with different players um, from CONCACAF, I mean, Mexico, Canada, U.S., I mean, all, a lot of, you know, really um, superstar players with a great work ethic and really relatable can give a lot of information to these, these teams. So I was... I was kind of, you know, brainstorming about how we might get that going. Thanks a lot, Michelle. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Okay.